What's up, everybody? Um, shit. Yeah, starting this podcast. You know what? This is as, uh, as beginner as it is going to get. I'm in shorts that are slightly above my knees. Um, no shirt, shirtless, you know. And talking to my cell phone. No mics. No fucking, no dude on the computer looking up shit for me. I'm on my Metro PCS phone. My, I guess what would be then, you know, a Boost Mobile now is just some LG phone from Metro PCS. Uh, Yeah, I got to do this. I got to, you know. Um, The, you know, the biggest, biggest comedians are, they're paving the way for us young aspiring comedians, you know, um, basically just doing stand up and having a podcast, you know, who would have knew you could make a, a living off of those and, you know, probably a decent living depending how, how well you're doing. Ah, yeah, um. I had work earlier, started at 10 o'clock, got out around 5, nothing crazy today, pretty dead day, Mm, I guess it's like that Black Friday week and, you know, Thanksgiving coming up, and Christmas, you know, people are... People are spending a shitload of money. Rent? Sheesh, dude. People are forking it up. I have this coworker. He told me that actually he invested, I think it was $200 every every week. I don't remember if he said weekly or monthly. But basically, since he started in January doing this, and, you know, now... Heading into December, he said he's saved up, I think, around $10,000, which is a shitload of money, bro. If you have $10,000 just waiting for you to spend, you know, like it's just all spending money. It's None of it is meant to invest in or (laughs) buy you a home. No, Christmas, bro, $10,000 of Christmas wishes, you know, nuts, these kids are going to be hella happy, <sighs> I got to stop looking at my body in the mirror, bro, you got to do it, <sighs> such a disappointment, <clears throat> oh, how I miss my high school body, not really, I don't even know if women love high school bodies. You know, you had the the fresh, tender muscles. Your body still looks like a baby, but it's just bigger. Yeah. I mean, cougars still might go for it, you know. Those ladies, you know, they need all the love they can get. Sorry for the silence. I'm smoking a bowl. Uh, I have my video game on pause because I was like, "All right, at nine o'clock, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this." And initially, I said I was gonna start this at eight because, you know, I wanted some time before I have to go and pick up my girlfriend. She gets out of work at ten, so maybe I'm thinking I can maybe do a thirty-minute podcast. 45, I don't know, last second before I really got to go. Um, but yeah, we're doing it. We're doing this, you know. I got some of my stand-up posted up online on YouTube. It's pretty dope. I enjoy it. Um, pretty cool, you know. It's not much, you know. I, I don't think I can. I, right now... I have like a a cool 10 minutes. I don't know how strong it is, but it's a cool 10 minutes. 
and even then, you know, it still needs work. I've, that's what I've been constantly doing, just going back at my jokes that work and just, re, you know, trying to perfect them. And yeah, it's wild, man. The, the journey of being a comic. You know, I need to put on a shirt. It is fucking cold. I got my fan on. I got the windows open. All because I want to smoke a little weed inside. All right. I think that works. Man. Sheesh. Dude, I hate smoking outside. I hate having to, like... You know, you're probably in the middle of hanging out, chilling. You're either watching TV. You know, currently I'm playing video games. This this new game I bought called Ghost Runner. Um, but um, yeah, in the middle, and then because you know maybe you live with people who don't necessarily want to smell that, or you're worried about you know your your room smelling or your house smelling, so you decide to get your weed, pack your bowl. And then head outside to smoke it. Dude, such a hassle, dude. I hate that shit. Yeah, I fucking hate it. I had to do it living with uh, my parents. I had to do it living with some roommate. And it just, it really squeezes all the fun out of... Out of smoking weed, yeah. You know, you're comfortable, cozy in your house. And you just want to spark up and just feel... 10 times cozier and 10 times, you know, more relaxed, you know, it's amazing, bro, when you're already just there watching what you're doing, your fridge is right behind you, or you got some snack with you already, it's the greatest, you know. Yeah, and I still, I, I, man, you know what, one of the things I used to love is just coming home with some beer, fucking, you know, smoking some weed, and playing video games, you know, just one of the greatest things, just a nice, chill night, <clears throat> yeah, <sighs> I got I had to get rid of that, uh, that beer though, man, I had to get rid of it, yeah. And, you know, the thing with beer is, like, it's it's really nice to drink. You know, it's really, really nice to drink. You know, but the downside is, downside is it takes a lot of it to get you, you know, where you want to be. And not only that, like, it, bro, it turns you, it turns you into Kirby. You know, it just turns you into a little ball of fucking yeast and bubbles, you know, I had, I had to cut it out, and man, even just the fact that drinking alcohol all the time, you know, is just, uh, you know, not only is it like damaging to, uh, you know, your, your body, but most like, you know, it's, it's damaging your mind too, you know, like, you could never not have a beer at some point, right? It'd be, it would in some way turn into your weed. You know, and um, like I'm not saying, you know, you should depend on weed, you know. But it's like, who knows, like on, on a scale of which one is better or worse for you? Dude. I'm picking weed if I got to pick a, a vice, you know, I mean, some people say they trip out, some people get paranoid, bro, that's what getting high is all about, isn't that what we all used to, you know, want to do drugs for, is to trip out, to see shit, to be in another world, you know? crazy now people just want they think getting high is basically you know like maybe people think getting high is just heroin 
or crack, you know, just like, a, basically they want, they want a safe way to fill those things, you know, you know, they're like, find me the safest heroin, one that won't kill me, and it's really hard to overdose on, yeah. Or crack, you know what I mean? And most of it all comes down to like, you know, I think probably some of these like, these places are like, you know, like these pharmaceutical companies. It's like, bro, we don't know what to do with these crazy people. You know, some people are just losers and lazy. So let's give them a little bit of legal crack, you know, fucking pump their brains up a little bit and make them into some kind of fucking <sighs> fucking I don't know dude pharmaceutical zombie you know just yes sir no sir all day cuz they're out of their minds you know they're just you know they're high and they don't really know what's right or wrong I mean does anybody Ugh, yeah Let's not go down this route, but serious. Yeah. I don't know. Drugs, it's a it's a weird conversation. Because I I guess like, you know, you, you can't just say, oh, I only want weed to be be legal, but not cocaine. Or but not the, but bro. You know, I I think alcohol is that exception where like people just don't consider that a drug they do but i think people throughout the world i don't even know where i'm going with this but why i don't understand how alcohol is just like not consider you know because people will be like oh wow that guy is an alcohol he let it you know it's like but bro the same thing with all these drugs you know nobody does crack one day and then just like addicted you know, it turns into a habit. You know, you make it go down that route. It's just weird because, yeah, I feel just like people are just like, oh, you know, I don't mind being a drunk dumbass in front of my my family. They know I'm drunk. You know, but, oh, I can't seem like a red-eyed, high dumbass to my family. They're going to know I smoked weed. You know, <clears throat> sorry for the whispering, guys. I mean, I'm in my uh, my house, and ugh, I don't want to sound hella crazy to my my neighbors, which are um, my sister, my my sister, my girlfriend's um, mom, and her sister, and sisters, dude. You know, they're gonna be like, "Bro, isn't she at work? Who the fuck is this guy talking to?" They have their ears on the on the door, thinking I'm probably talking to some chick or something. Or nah, why would they think that? For all they know, I'm on the phone. Which, in you know, I actually am. <laughs> Technically, is what I'm using. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Today was whatever's just normal work day. Yeah, it's it's weird having like one car, you know, when you're with somebody. You know, it's a cu you're a couple, but it's one car. It's that's the hardest thing to decide who takes it when. You know. And really, is there a schedule? People could do it. yes, there's schedules. Do a schedule. It probably helps. It works. You know. We're pretty much over here. We're just like doing it until. Until somebody feels bad for the other person, you know, I'm like, ah, I should let them use it. I've been using it for this whole month. They've been Ubering all their money just to get to work. Let me do it. Yeah, it was happening that way. Most of, you know, like, uh, I would leave the car with my girlfriend just to make shit easier for her, you know, while, well, yeah, I'm spending money to go to work. And then, you know, it was happening like this for a little bit, but I, as of recently, you know, I've been having the car and it's cool. It's nice. 
But man, I gotta say, dude, I waste I waste time. I am not the productive dude she thought she had. <laughs> you know, I am not on that productive level. I like to chill a lot and get some things done. I don't like getting a lot of things done and barely chilling. Can't do it, bro. You know, I guess it's not also, you know, you're also doing stuff on other people's watch, you know, like, yes, we talked about having a, you know, the the Christmas tree, because Christmas coming up, we need a Christmas tree, and yeah, we both talked about it, and I told her to look it up, and she found one, and, you know, I said, yes, I'm going to pick it up, and and it's just like, <laughs> I do it, but for some reason, like, on the way there, like, my mood is just, like, crashing, and I don't know, I just end up, like, being upset about, you know, having to, like, do things before work, you know, which is stupid, you know, because, yeah, she, you know, we, she'll do stuff during her work, you know, like, during lunch, she'll go do some grocery shopping, and all that stuff, and it's like, I don't know, bro, I just, I, I think girls are just, you know, that way, you know, they, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't mean to say, that, but, you know, they grew up with Barbie dolls, and Barbie houses, and all that stuff, so in their mind, they've probably thought about this a million times, I had action figures, it was the action figure and my home. You know what I mean? My home was a jungle. My home was some prison or who the hell knows, you know? But you're just fighting on the, on the couch arm and the bath. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm not thinking about groceries. And I don't know, like, I guess the design of a room, you know? Maybe I'd... <laughs> You know, I, I think I do basic stuff. I'm typical, you know, like when I'm single, I'm the typical bachelor. Your small-ass carpet. You have one small-ass couch, a little bed with no bed frame, and a TV. You know, a whole lot of empty space. And guitars that you don't even use. Yeah. Yeah, and I got upset and I... You know, I, I complained to her, and it really hurt her feelings, and, uh, yeah, I felt bad. I felt bad, because it's just like, yeah, I mean, I wanted this in the end, but, man. Uh, just, yeah. You know, I, I do a lot, like, for, for myself, I suppose, you know, and I'll tidy up. But just, like, constantly running errands is draining. It... You know, and it really has you, you know, like, kind of calculating your day, you know, what you have time for, this, that, and it's like, holy hell, bro, that's a lot, you know what I mean? Unless I have, like, legit responsibilities or that I have to be busting, like, you know, at certain times or, you know what I mean, Sched that they're scheduled um, responsibilities, it's easier for me, but I do things one thing at a time, bro. You know, sometimes I'll go out of my way and do a couple things. But it's like, hey, I did a couple things. Like, come on, what else do you need to do? So I don't have groceries in the fridge. Big deal, bro. Big fucking deal. I'm just going to fucking go to the burger joint and get some fries. Fuck it, I'll go tomorrow to the grocery store. It's not that bad, you know? But you see, like, I guess when you're living with somebody, it, it it's both of you, you know? So you have to think about that other person, you know? Because, yeah, she's bringing the food dope, but I'm like, yeah, but I'm eating it. To, or I'm eating it too, you know? So... It, it goes by faster, and it's like, what the fuck? I just went to the grocery store, and it's all gone already. It's your turn. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, and I thought about, I thought about going to get some groceries right now just here at the store, but I totally lagged it. Totally lagged it. Yeah. Definitely not going to happen. Um I could have gotten some vegetables or something, but nah. I lagged it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and y- you know what? Before work, she she uh she freaking rearranged our home and cleaned it. It's like holy hell, lady. You see, she has the passion for it. You know, when you have a passion for it, you're like, I need to get this done right now, and you want to. You know, the need drives the want, or where the want drives the need. Who the hell knows? But yeah, yeah, and um. Yeah. Me, what, what, are, dude? I just love playing video games. I, I, I do stand up comedy. I mean, what other hobbies? I like to go running. I write. Farting is a fun sport, you know. But yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm thirty one. You know, maybe like, maybe like six years ago, you know, I, I'll probably be on the streets riding my bike everywhere, you know, just getting drunk with friends afterward. I was never tired, you know, it didn't matter. Now it's like, uh, is it all worth it? You know, I don't know. Yeah, I even had two jobs, like. When I, you know, I, of course, I don't know when I had it, but I had two jobs multiple times, and it's like, it's tiring, bro. It is fucking tiring. And if you have two jobs, bro, if you have any dream, you know, outside of what your job is, it's not getting done. I mean, it <laughs> may be, but, bro, that is going to be one hard task. You know? Even if you have like a say like a eight to 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 four o'clock shift, five o'clock shift or whatever. Who knows, whatever. Eight in the morning, maybe to like three, four, who knows, whatever the the shit is, you know. And then you have another work shift probably like at seven o'clock, six o'clock, and that goes up until who knows, eleven, midnight, and then you gotta go home and then <laughs> practice your craft or work on it it's insanely impossible it's not insanely impossible just fuck it go on drugs bro there we go another reason why it should be legal because artists need drugs in the real world you know They need, it has to happen. I mean, I know there's some sober artists, but really, are those the guys that you're influenced by? The sober artist? You know? I think sobriety worked in, like, the punk culture because, you know, it's like a... It's like this... Uh, it still can be con- seen as this, like, a, aggressive... I mean, or it's a style within punk, you know? People wanted to really individualize themselves when it came to that scene you know so you probably could be get away with me yeah i'm i'm a sober punk or whatever you know but people hated you still i don't think there is any other style of punk that all of them were like hey that sober punk over there he's cool nah most sober punks i don't know have i ever made a met a sober punk Probably most of the audience is like, what the fuck is this dude talking about? I don't know. But yeah, it's like, bro, there's too much shit going on in the world. You know, and who knows? Our art, our, Maybe there's some artists that are going to school. You know? They're doing, they're doing their, their job, going to school. We don't know if they have two jobs and going to school. It's... 
It's fucked, bro. Hella fucked. You know? I mean, it's basically, you either do or you don't. You either make it happen or you don't. You know? Because maybe if that artist, you know, was really wanting to focus on art, he'll stop everything and just focus on the art. Yeah. I think if I were to have, if I were to leave my job, dude, I would waste so much time. Yeah, I'm an artist, like or whatever. Say for whatever kind of art. Right now, I'm doing comedy. You know, so if I were to just quit my job and just focus on comedy, dude, I would waste so much time, bro. Twenty four hours a day in a day, dude. Okay, well, besides the sleeping, but I would literally waste. Like eight hours doing nothing. You know? And I would probably invest an hour an hour into my craft. You know, and then probably waste another three hours, four hours, maybe do like work on like it for like thirty minutes again. And I mean, yeah. I would waste so much time. You know, and I think it's like I think it's kind of like that that thing you know where I like I was saying if if I have like a a scheduled responsibility, I can then like you know and you know calculate the time I have and how I should spend it, you know, because having the job like it takes away so much time, so much time in your life, forty hours a week. Of your life, 40 hours a week. I don't even know how many hours are in a week, you know, just the regular days. Let's let's check this out. In one week. Seven, 168. 168 hours in a week. You know, and that's, um, yeah, it sucks. I guess when you divide it, it's like 4% of, your, of the time you have. But, I mean, you got to factor in sleep, you know, depending how, how much you sleep. Like, I sleep probably, for sure, eight hours. I'm in bed around midnight. I'm up around nine, nine hours. You know? I don't want to keep on doing the math on it, but it's like, it's, I'm sure it's less and less, bro. You know? It's too much. Yeah, but it's comedy stuff, man. It's it's weird. It's cool, you know, because it's weird and it's cool. It's weird because, like, strangely, my the the first set of jokes that I wrote to start off worked. You know, they worked, and I think. You know what? I think when it what it is is like they, it came down to what they're they're probably just a fresh perspective, more or less than funny. <laughs> Maybe, dude. Be, dude, you have a shitload of white boys out there just talking about their dick. A bunch of white dudes talking about their dick, and how bad they are at sex. It is insane how much they have nothing to talk about that and that i guess i'm probably gonna go down like this race hole you know what i mean but dude i'm sure most of these people are not fucking working a lot 
I want to see like a regular struggling ass white guy working 40 hours. <laughs> oh, I don't even know where I'm going with this. This is so stupid. But it's just weird, dude. It's weird. And I don't know. I just don't know. So, you know, it, there's not a Latinos that like that I see when I go out to open mics. You know, there's probably like from what I recognize, three other dudes out of like hundreds of white guys and black guys. It's always white and black. Oh, why always white and black? You know? What's up with the Asians and the Mexicans, you know? The the other races, you know? Why are they out? I mean, well, Asians, now it's their time. You know, they got the mainstream right now and the Latinos have the underground. You know, it's so weird. It's like black people are white people now. Asians are black people. And Mexicans or Latinos are the Asians. And white people... They're white people. You know, that's it. I don't know. Shit has changed, man. Like, it's so weird, the times. And it's crazy because, like, dude. I'm sorry, white people. Dude, I, I, a bunch of you guys are my friends, dude. So it's not even, like, anything. But it's basically the, you know, history, bros. Don't fucking act new about this shit. History's dog. This shit's not gonna just fucking die because you want it to. You know? Minorities, if you will, if we're still considered minorities, I don't fucking know. Now have the opportunity to fucking blow shit up right now, you know? So why not? It's gonna happen. And white people, I, I think you guys should just sit back and just be like, you know, let's just chill. You know, let the Mexicans bring in their tacos, let the Asians bring in their sushi, you know. Let these black men turn our fucking white guys into athletes. Bro, let it happen, dog. Yeah. But it's so funny because I was watching like Girl Interrupted, you know, this movie with uh, Angelina Jolie. Uh, what the hell is her name? The short haired bitch from fucking Beetlejuice. Oh, my God. I was just holy shit. <sighs> Why can I not think of her name? I'm sorry, guys. I got to go online. I got to. I got to. What the fuck is her name? Um, Winona Ryder and Brittany Murphy. Dude, Whoopi Goldberg, Jared Leto, sick ass, sick ass, um, cast. But, um, yeah, man, I was just looking, I was like, dude. No, there's no, I mean, it is in the 60s, so I, I guess I forget about that. I totally forgot. I mean, why should I even say what I'm talking about, you know? But really, why couldn't the show just be modernized for that, for, you know, whenever it came out in the 90s or early 2000s? I think it was 1999. Why couldn't it have been a modern, you know, uh crazy bitches in an asylum because really most of the shit that they did didn't necessarily reflect what the 60s were all about yeah some of the crazy bitches made some like semi-racist jokes i guess not really offensive but you know they would sing some kind of like it sound like a slave song to whoopi goldberg or whatever 
But really, bro, like, that ain't shit. That's hella passive aggressive. <laughs> Typical girls. Just call her the N word, Haina, if that's what you want to do. Can't even cross the line. I don't know. Besides that, it was. You know, I think what it comes down to is just like, look, I'm tired of seeing white people as the main role. You know? You guys took. You fucking whitewashed every single aspect of life. You know, now that's it, you know? Too many of your white bitches got fucked by Latinos and black men and Asians. Where they're like, whoa, whoa, buddy. There are some stark differences that we actually really enjoy. You know? I'm sure. And dude, white people are learning. You know, they're they're getting into they're they're rapping. You know? It's no longer I don't think it's considered taboo anymore. You know? Yeah, I guess there's some underground rappers back in the nineties, but bro, like I mean when I was a when I was a kid, there was vanilla ice. And then pretty much everybody mocked the shit out of him because I guess he wasn't real, you know. And then there became there then came Eminem, and he you know shocked the world, dude. He was legit black, you know. He was a black rapper from Detroit, you know. That just sounded like a white guy. Yeah. So, but now it's just like they're all over the place, white rappers. All over the place. And their music still sucks. I kind of dug Suicide Boys. I mean, I'm, I'm probably like think, miss, missing out on some other like white boy rap music that was off the chain, you know? I don't know. I was never an MGK fan, Machine Gun Kelly. I didn't like, I just felt like he was combining that alternative sound with rap. Like, it's just like, bro, no, not doing it. I guess there's this guy named Logic. I don't know if he's white. He's cool. Not bad, you know. Maybe that's just what it has to be. Maybe white guys, that's it, dude. You guys got to go underground. You want to be all about it? You want to be dope shit? Go underground, dude. Fuck the mainstream. Hit up underground, bro. Create an underground. You know? It's been done by you white people, you know? Not the railroads, but there has been underground scenes because of you guys, you know? So do it. Yeah. Or just practice on the craft, bro. It's a, it's going to, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. So crazy, the world. So weird. I don't even know how, like... Ah... <sighs> I guess just information, bro. You, as you grow, you actually realize what happened in the world, and not realize, but you learn, man. You freaking learn, and it's it's crazy because it's it's not all white people, you know. It's it, but it's just, bro, like a good portion of white people, you know, are still on top, and I think what came, what is happening is like, you know, the world will change for the better, you know. It, I'm sure it will. Every there's always gonna be a bad side to everything, but I don't know, man. Like maybe there's maybe there is still I'm sure there's still some stuff that happened in the fifties and the sixties and maybe somewhat in the early seventies that are still happening or not happening, but like things that are like 
maybe characteristics or institutions that still like have not necessarily separated from the past who knows you know I, there, things have changed a lot over the past couple years you know things changed a shitload george floyd you know derek chauvin he he got you know i've never in my life i've never seen a fucking police get charged with murder or anything never in my it's as far as i can remember you know, I thought homeboy was going to get, I mean, I didn't, I, I, I think I had guessed like 30 some years. They gave him 22, bro. That's a shitload of time, man. 20 years in prison. And I was hearing some dude talk about it on YouTube. I don't remember his name. I can't shout him out right now, but maybe another episode I'll, I'll shout him out and maybe people could check his shit out. He's pretty insightful, you know, but he was talking about how pretty much uh, Chauvin is going to be, he's going to be isolated, you know, because he's a, he's a high profile inmate and dudes in jail are going to want to kill him for a name, you know? So that's not going to be easy, man. 20 years of isolation, you're going to be different, bro. You, you're still going to have the, the guy's life on your hands, you know? It's going to be different. You know? Kyle Rittenhouse, he uh, got dismissed of all charges. <sighs> yeah. I don't... Th it's, not, it's not necessarily the same thing. It's just... I, I, there was, you know, the killings happened during a Black Lives Matter protest. And I think one, you know, it was one white guy that got injured and I think two black guys. I probably have to go back and read it again, but got dismissed, bro. I mean, not even. Ah. It's just crazy, man. You know, like. Getting away with murder. And, but it's so weird because I've heard this quote say, like, you know, I'd rather have the country. I'm butchering the shit out of this quote. Like, basically, like, a bunch of criminals where it's possible for everybody to, you know, get in and get out of prison, I guess. Then have, like, a fascist dictatorship. Which are weird extremes, you know? <laughs> you know, it's so crazy. But. Yeah. I don't know, man. Interesting. But. That. The. Whether the decision is with what you agree or not, you know, like. It's due process. And that's what we have to, like. That's what we have to recognize. That's the key to, you know, like fairness in the country instead of fascism or like, you know, maybe like some like back, I guess, with Europe, you know, and their king being able to do whatever, whatever they want. You know, due process gives you the, the, the chance to be able to get out of punishment. And whether, you know, you guys could, some people could say it's right or wrong, if, you know, murder is murder, this and that, but you always got to think about, you know, when it comes back to you. I'm not saying, like, I would ever murder or, you know, assuming people will murder, but it doesn't necessarily have to be this certain case of murder. It could be any other thing that can, you know, go to court, have a certain precedent, and, you know, that precedent affects the way things are going. Um, so it's like, I, I don't think I'm saying like, you know, just be, oh, well, fuck it. That's how it is. You know, blah, blah. Like, obviously have an opinion, you know, like 
I think people still should see what's up with, every, you know, like court cases and stuff like and all that because it's important, man. I think it's really important to be in, not somewhat involved and aware of what's going on in the world, you know? Because that's the way information is travels, you know, through communication. And obviously, if we want to be better as a people, the word has to get out for whatever it is, you know? Don't just leave it up to the Christians and the Catholics to be like, oh, Jesus Christ. Nah, dude. Fucking talk about, like, the presidency, you know, Joe Biden. Talk about that shit. You know? I know a lot of people before were like, oh, you know, before we didn't talk about politics. But it's like, bro, before we didn't have cell phones. And we didn't have, you know... We didn't. We weren't able to send videos live directly to somebody. You know, it's a different world, bro. And I'm I'm willing to experience it. I'm willing to find out. You know, uh, I gotta go and pick up my girl right now in a bit. Five minutes. I think I'm gonna smoke this last bowl. Um, I want to thank you guys for listening. Um, I'm going to continue to keep on trying to do these podcasts, you know, um, I don't know if they're going to be scheduled, but you know, everything's beginning right now. It's the start of everything right now. I'm going to be going to Cal State LA soon. This comedy stuff is going, you know, it's just on its way. So, yeah. Starting off with the cell phone, no mic, and in my living room. So, and I don't have a name for the podcast right now. That'll come eventually. Who knows by when. I don't want to rush it. I don't really want to, like, I want it to hit me, you know, like. I want it to be like, oh, fuck, perfect, you know? Yeah. But uh, thank you, everybody, for for listening. Um, All two of you. Yeah. Um, I have some some of my stand-up videos posted up on on my channel right here if you guys want to check them out. They're not too long, no more than 10 minutes, or even eight probably. Um, and if you guys follow me at, uh, Instagram, follow, follow me on Instagram at Russell N 90. Um, that's R U S S E L L N 90. Um, I'm always posting up my shit right there. So yeah, thank you everybody. And, uh, stay tuned. Shit's just going to keep on going and, you know, little by little. All right. Bye-bye.